more people have lost their faith during reading about Exodus because what did the horses do? Why do they have to drown the horses? Why do they have to drown the firstborns? And that usually is the problem that comes up there. My version was Moses goes to Pharaoh after one of the plagues and Pharaoh says, uncle, I give up. Okay, you guys can go. And then God hardens Pharaoh's heart. And Pharaoh changes his mind and says, no, you guys can't go. So another plague on Egypt. And Moses goes to him and Pharaoh says, okay, this time, except God hardens his heart. And wait a second. He's like, forget the horses and the babies. Like anyone there is getting punished because of an external thing <laughs> controlling his behavior. And then God judges and you know, the usual sort of, none of this makes any sense. And that and some more sort of personal aspects of all of it just kind of combined to one night at two in the morning, I woke up and said, oh, I get it. There's no God and there's no free will. And the universe is this big, empty, indifferent place. And that's kind of where I've been at ever since. So you were only a teenager at the time. Were you vocal about this new understanding of the world at that time? And did you get pushback from your parents or from your teachers or whoever you talked to about this? Or, or is this something you kind of kept to yourself? Mostly kept to myself. My parents pretty much went to their graves many years later, not knowing I was an atheist, because, you know, <laughs> why bother? <laughs> They're, well, all that's going to do is upset them. You know, it's not that important. I was pretty soon surrounded by a sufficiently sort of educated, left-leaning, cynical crowd, so that none of that stuff seemed very surprising. It certainly wiped out my capacity to listen to teaching from rabbis. And your mom took you to see the Natural His History Museum, I'm assuming, to see some primates, and that sort of lit up something inside of you. How did you explain that with the sort of atheism belief? <laughs> how, do you, how did you explain that sense of excitement or inspiration? Well, I sort of fixated on primates. Uh, you know, that was my go-to, what do you want to do for your birthday? Take me to the Museum of Natural History. That was just heaven. I kind of imprinted on primates quite a few years earlier than that. And I don't know what it was, something about like these animals and these African dioramas. Like I just wanted to live inside there. I did not want to live in my neighborhood in Brooklyn. I was not having a good time. Suddenly a place like that seemed like the most <laughs> like wonderful place to escape to and maybe even be a non-human primate in the process. Uh, so I happened to imprint on mountain gorillas and I, I still remember the, you know, the diorama, which is probably 110 years old now that sort of, I looked at it and said, ah, I want to be there. I want to be with them. That, that mountain back, that silverback mountain gorilla there, that's, that's the nearest thing I'm ever going to have to a grandfather. There we go. That's what I want to do. <laughs> you also wrote in your book, your recent book about depression and how you first started experiencing that as a teenager. So was there something that happened maybe unassociated with any of this? That Yeah. Um, I would say it had much to do with <laughs> deciding there's no God, there's no free will, and there's no purpose to anything. That sort of sent me in a downward spiral that I've been uh, sort of mucking around in ever since that, that seemed, I don't know, that sort of struggling in a book where I'm hoping to convince people there's no free will whatsoever. That's the pretty dangerous outcome because if we're just biological machines, the search for meaning is pretty damn challenging and all of that. And I did not particularly have the psychological means as a 15 year old to kind of handle all that. But yeah, that is readily where that 
takes one. Thank you so much for watching. Just FYI, we post a new video almost every day, so make sure you comment and subscribe below so you don't miss out on anything. And if you enjoyed this video, I think you're really gonna love this one as well. And if you ever wanna see a playlist of all of my podcasts or all of the plot twists or any other category of videos, you can find links to those in the description below.